This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I really appreciate you joining me today and this is some news coming from the Midlands. Two stories. The first one we're going to discuss in a second but coming up as well in this episode is about the mysterious death of Sebastian Zarnock who was found dead in his police cell after being taken into custody in relation to the disappearance of his ex-girlfriend Gabriella Kasilko. He was found dead in his cell on Wednesday the 6th of September in Leicester and an investigation is currently underway. But before we discuss that story, the main story of this episode is the death of Ricardo Cottrell in Nottingham. Ricardo was stabbed 14 times on Broad Street, which is a main road that runs through the city centre of the city. This was a calculated pre-planned attack and the police believe in court it was revealed that this was a revenge attack for what they believe Ricardo had done to them. It was revealed in court that Ricardo was on leave from prison and he came home for the weekend when he was stabbed to death on that fateful day last year in 2022. It was also revealed in court as well that Ricardo had a history of convictions and time in prison. His last sentence for which he was on release at this time was for a police chase where he crashed a car into traffic and was also found with a large amount of drugs. He was 32 years old at the time of that conviction, but he had also been convicted in 2012 for his involvement in the riots that followed the death of Mark Duggan at the hands of police. He was jailed for three years in that incident as well and this time he'd came out on licence and Ricardo Anderson, Malcolm Francis, Daniel Francis and Laval Moore all plotted to murder him on that fateful night. Two knives were used, it was heard in court and Mr Cottrell, who is a father of two, succumbed to his injuries despite the best efforts of emergency services. The killers were in court this month for sentencing and all of them were given life sentences and each told the minimum length of time that will serve behind bars before they can apply for parole. Malcolm Francis will serve a minimum of 30 years. Daniel Francis's brother will serve a minimum of 27 years. Anderson will serve a minimum of 27 years. And Laval Moore will serve a minimum of 25 years. A fifth defender, Wade Smith, 37 years old from Top Valley, was found not guilty of murder and not guilty of manslaughter. The jury heard that Mr Cottrell had gone out on this evening, that he was released from prison, and he was ambushed and murdered outside Wax Bar at 2am on the 24th of April 2022. Opening the case for the prosecution, John Lloyd Jones KC told the jury at their trial, it is the prosecution's case that they can draw a strong inference that the purpose of the short expedition away from the cars and to go back to them was to collect knives they had entered the club and all of them had been searched and no weapons had been found but when they left for a few minutes they returned and they were clearly armed footage that was shown to the jury captured the moment the three defendants malcolm francis daniel francis and richard anderson left the bar and headed towards mr cottrell before they stabbed him to death the court heard mr cottrell ran down the street before being stabbed and was chased and attacked again by the trio and it was malcolm francis who dealt the fatal blow Laval Moore, who was jailed for a minimum of 25 years, was the lookout and it was his role to spot where the victim was going so that Malcolm Francis and his brother could ambush him. The court heard that Laval was not involved in the physical attack, but he played an important role in supporting them and also being the lookout and the getaway driver. And it was also revealed in court that the attack only stopped when somebody said, let's go, he's dead. The prosecution revealed in court there was evidence to suggest that this was an act of revenge following a previous violent altercation and hostility and ill feeling between Mr Cottrell and his killers. But Mr Cottrell didn't have any weapon on him that day and he was outnumbered when he was chased down and brutally murdered by the group. Following the murder, the prosecution said the defendants did everything they could to evade capture, including fleeing Nottingham, discarding knives and disposing of clothing that was worn on the night and also mobile phones. Robust work by detectives led to the arrests of the defendants within a few weeks of the attack and a combination of CCTV, forensic analysis and mobile phone evidence helped secure the murder convictions this week. Judge Stuart Rafferty said Mr Cottrell was unarmed and defenceless when he was murdered and this is truly a tragedy. He said whatever Cottrell had done in his past he did not deserve to die in this way that he had met his death was appalling and there was a lot of different contributing factors each of you knew exactly what was going to happen that night and this was a carefully 
planned killing in cold blood. Mr Cottrell's family said in a statement that Ricardo was one in a million and an inspiration to everyone that knew him. He was a family man, he loved his family and would do anything for them. He was the heart and the glue of our family. We are grateful and blessed to have shared the experience of living life with Ricardo and being loved by him, but his legacy will live on through his beautiful daughters who are left behind without a father. We are happy to know who, who was responsible for Ricardo's murder and they will no longer pose a risk to the public for a considerable time. Detective Inspector Claire Dean, who led the investigation, said, This was an appalling act of premeditated violence in a busy public place and our thoughts remain with Mr Cottrell's family and the attempt for them to come to terms with the devastating loss and it was described as cowardly by the prosecution in the courtroom. After carrying out the calculated attack, the group fled the scene, leaving Mr Cottrell dead on the pavement. These three sentences should hopefully bring some relief to the family of Ricardo, and it does mean that these dangerous individuals have been taken off the street for a considerable amount of time. So I thought this story was really interesting, and it definitely goes to show the consequences to these decisions that are made in the moments where all four of them went out that night to commit murder. There was no reason to murder Ricardo. This could have just been a fight, but because they brought knives into it, somebody lost their life. And now two girls have got to grow up without their father. So I really want to hear what people have to say on that story. And then the second story of this episode, coming from Leicester. A man was found dead inside a police cell after his arrest for the murder of his ex-girlfriend. Leicester police have named the man that was found dead in police custody as Sebastian Zarnock. Zarnock was being questioned by the police following the disappearance of Gabriela Kosilko. This was his ex-girlfriend and she had moved to the UK and he had stayed over in Poland. While being held in police custody, the 30-year-old was found unresponsive in his cell on the 6th of September 2023. Despite the best efforts of the police, he was pronounced dead shortly after. Due to the fact the man died in police custody, a mandatory referral has been made to the Independent Office for Police Conduct and they have begun an independent investigation. The force said they will cooperate with the investigation and they will do everything they can to help the family of Gabriella to find answers. Shortly after he was arrested, the body of Gabriella was found and she had been missing for several days. Gabriela Casilco was an eyebrow technician and she disappeared the day after her former partner Sebastian Zarnock flew to the UK from his native Poland. It has now been speculated that Zarnock killed himself inside the police cell after initially being arrested over the kidnapping of Gabriela and it has now turned into a murder investigation since they discovered her body. She was last seen at Tesco Express in Foss Road, North Leicester at 11.30 on August the 31st and she was driving a red Audi A1 and this was recovered four miles away the following day. It was only several days ago the police found her remains and her mother has flew in from Poland to formally identify her body. Detective Chief Inspector Mark Zinski from the East Midlands Special Operations Unit Murder Investigation Team said we continue to investigate the full circumstances surrounding Gabriella's death so if anybody has any information they should please get in touch but they also said as well in the statement they are not looking for anybody else in connection to her death and they have submitted all of these this information to the coroner to be part of the inquest so that statement on its own would imply that Zarnock the man they already had in police custody was their main suspect and their only suspect so rest in peace to Gabriella and my condolences to her friends and family and we'll definitely keep you updated on the inquest that is to follow from this and please pay your respects in the comments. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Please don't forget to send your stories to news at scarcitystudios.com and follow on social media as well at Scar City Studios and the website for the latest updates at scarcitystudios.com. Peace.